Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this video is the third video in my PyQt5 full app tutorial series. We started off the series by building this welcome screen that you see in front of you right here. So this welcome screen contains two main components, static text in the form of labels that you see right here. So this is just text to welcome the user to the application, as well as two interactive buttons to obtain user input. Now the first button is a login button, which takes us to a login screen that contains the necessary fields for a user to log into their account. These accounts are actually stored in SQLite database. Now we said last time that this database is mainly for the sake of example, meaning you can use virtually any authentication service in this case or any type of database. Also, the practice is not the best practice because we have actually stored usernames and passwords explicitly in a database with no hashing or security functions. But like I said, this is a tutorial series for building graphical user interfaces and database, the database part is not the main concern. Now going back to the interface, so we know what the login does and we built it in the second video of this series. Now if you have not seen that, that, that video, I highly recommend going to that video first, mainly because I will be glossing over some certain things that we've done multiple times before in this video in order to just shorten the time and not to be too repetitive. Now in this video, we'll be creating the create a new account screen. So this is the screen you see right here. It contains the title as well and then two um, or three different fields. You have the username field, a password field, and a confirm password field. Once that is done, the user should be able to sign up. Now here, because I left the fields empty, the error message is telling me to please input all fields. So then I'm just going to go ahead and create a brand new username. Let's say the username is the name of Gary. And then this guy, Gary, he has the password of ASDFG. And then he's going to repeat his password. He's going to click sign up to create his new account. And this should take him to a brand new screen, a brand new page in our application called the fill in your profile screen. Now, before I actually highlight this screen, I just want to go back to the database and show you that here, we do not have any information related to this Gary person who just signed up to the application by creating an account. But if we reload the database, we'll see that we have a brand new entry for Gary and it has his password that we just entered. So this is the main goal of this tutorial. We will be building the create new account screen. And then based on that, the user will be taken to this next page. Now this page is where the user will be creating their or actually filling up their profile, populating it with their user information. So before the user just created a simple username and password. Now is the time to fill in their profile. We can see here we have a placeholder image that the user can replace by uploading a new profile photo. And then the user can actually verify their username, then maybe change their first name, set their last name, set their birth date and choose a gender. So once that is done, they will be able to later on move on to the application. However, this screen is not the main focus of this tutorial. This will be in the part four of the series. We will be building the screen in depth talking about images in PyQt5 and how we can actually upload images and change the profile photo. For now, our goal is the create new account screen. So without further ado, let's get started. So here, let's just, okay. So given our current setup, let's just refresh over what we currently have. So what we have right now is the welcome screen class. This class loads this welcome screen UI file that you see right here from PyQt5 Qt Designer. So this UI file, like we said before, is internally an XML file, but it gets loaded into Python, into Python classes and saves the different components of this XML file, of this UI file into the Python class, into its variables. So this is how we use this load UI function that we see right here, that we have imported from PyQt5.uic. So once that is done, we actually assign some um, connections to the buttons. So we see right here that the self.login.clicked is connected to go to login, which is a function. So what I'm essentially saying is this login button, so self.login, this variable with a login button, I'm connecting it to a go to login function. This function will just simply transfer me from my current screen and display the login screen. Now we have talked about this really in depth in the previous two parts of this tutorial. So do check that out if you feel like you are a bit confused, 
but this is essentially what is going on. Now the same thing happens when we click the create button, so which is this button right here. Once this is clicked, it will load um, the create screen. So once we load the create screen, now I've hidden the code for the login screen since we will not be modifying it in this video. We will only be modifying the create account screen. So we define the class for the create account screen. And actually let's hide as well the fill profile screen for now. We created the class, we have a constructor and this constructor will call the um, Q dialog. It will be inherited from Q dialog, which is the main sort of class that encompasses everything that we're doing. So every single screen that we have is a Q dialog. And then each class will represent one page in this Q dialog and it will be loaded accordingly from a .ui file. So we have loaded the UI into create account. Now at this point, if I run my application and I press on create new account, I will be taken to the sign up screen. However, nothing really happens. It's not interactive. I can just type whatever I want. Even the passwords don't have really that um, sort of password bullet points or dots that hide the password. So we can actually even start with that. So the way we're going to start with that is by doing the following. So we go back to our PyQt5 designer and we check what those fields are actually called. We said that each field has an object name and this object name represents it. So here we have the password field and here we have the confirm password field. So what we want to do is basically the same thing that we did for the login screen where we change the echo mode for this field. So we just go ahead and say self dot password field dot set echo mode and then we set this echo mode to the following qt widgets dot q line edit so this is a line edit and then i choose the property called password and this is how we just decided that this field will have its contents hidden and blocked out by these password dots so let me just do this here just for the sake of being quick all right so we have changed this very first thing now the next thing we want to change is actually what happens when this button is clicked, right? So we're just going to say, so self dot, um, let's actually check what this button is called. So this button is called sign up. We go back to the code, so self dot sign up. Again, we can access the sign up button using the self keyword because this, do this load UI function that we have has loaded our UI file into the Python uh, class, into this certain object. So I refer to it by going by self dot sign up. And then we say, if it was clicked, I want to connect to a function called self dot, um, let's say sign up function. All right. So the very last thing or the main thing that we need to do is code the sign up function to make sure that the sign up works. So first I define my function. All right. And now I'm basically ready to start now in terms of what we should be able to do. The main thing that we want to do essentially is after we sign up and create this new account in the database, we want to be able to go on to the next screen. Now we know how to do this already because we've done this multiple times by now. So let's actually just code this part to start with. So let's say fill profile. We create a fill profile variable. This represents an object of the class fill profile screen. Now this class represents the next screen that we want to go to. I have already coded just the main parts of the class, just the constructor to load the UI and load the placeholder image. Now we will talk about this in the next video more in depth. So I've created this object. The next thing I want to do is add it to my widget. So widget.addWidget widget, and I will add the fill profile. And finally, I will increment the, uh, the index of my widget by doing widget.setCurrentIndex I get my current index, okay, and then I just add plus one to it. Okay, so running it by now, let's see what we have so far. If I press create account, all right, so it has crashed. Now we can exactly find out why. All right, yeah, so we call the function sign up function and did not call it the same thing. So now this should work. We create a new account. And now what we need to do is simply, let's say, create a new person. So Mary K J something. And then we can type in any password. So we can see the password field has now the, um, 
the blocks to just block things out. Now, I didn't match the passwords intentionally because just to show you that we have no handling so far, no validation for these types of editors. So now if I do press sign up, this will take me to the next screen automatically without really validating or checking anything. So we have the primitive part of the sign up function down. What we need to do now is do some validation. We need to check two main things. The first thing being whether or not the fields have been left empty. You do not want to proceed to the sign up without having the user fill in every single one of the fields. Fill in the username, the password, and the confirmed password. The next thing is you need to check whether the password and the confirmed password are actually the same. So to do all these, all these things, I'm going to first extract the different texts from the fields using the following. So self dot, we called it email field dot text. So we've done this before in the login screen. So this is how I extract the text from this field. And then password is equal to self dot password field dot text. And then the very same thing for the confirm password field. So we're extracting the text from these line edits, these fields that we have in our form, and we save them in Python variables. Once we have done this, we can start checking and validating the user inputs. So let me check the length of each of these guys. So if the length of user is zero or the length of password is equal to zero or the length of the confirm password is equal to zero. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to self dot error dot set text. Please fill in all inputs. Now, what is this error thing that you see right here? If we go back to designer, we will see that we have this guy right here that resembles exactly the type of error that we created in the previous video. So it is a label that has red text that you can see right now. It's currently empty, but will be populated in case the user creates an error, it has something wrong with their inputs, and we need to just show it for validation. So now we show the user that they should fill in all inputs. And now what's important to ensure that it will not go to the next page without the, uh, the fields being populated, we move these things right here. So now, it will not create the fill profile object and go to it unless the, all the fields have been actually inputted correctly. So to run it and check it, so we create a new account and we try to sign up, we see the editor text show up right here. So we see, please fill in all inputs. It's telling us, no, do not proceed with signing up for your account unless you fill in all the inputs. All right. Now the next, uh, next validation step that we need to do before finally adding everything to the database is the following. We need to check if password and confirm password do not match. In the case that they do not match, what I want to do is I want to set another error message. So the error message will look like this. Rather than please fill in on imp all inputs, it will be passwords do not match. And finally, the very last thing we want is we want to code the real sign up function. So let's say the user inputted all the fields, they match their passwords. What do I want to do? I just want to write this to the SQLite database. Again, I will stress that SQLite is only being used here for the sake of example. You can use Firebase authentication. You can use the Google authentication. You can use a different database. You can use MySQL, MongoDB. This is only for the sake of example. This is a, a graphical user interface series not related to databases specifically. All right. So how do I work with the SQLite? So if you've seen the previous video, you know that the first thing we need to do is to connect to sqli3.connect to our database. Our database is the following, this shop underscore data dot db file that we see right here. So shop data dot db. And it looks like this. We have this table here called login info. In the table, we have two main columns, username and password. The username is whatever that person's username is. Their password is, of course, their password. So what we want is to write a new row to this table insert a new row with a new username and a new password. So how do we do this? After connecting to the database, what we want to do is we want to create a cursor. So connection.cursor, okay, cursor. 
and then what we want is to extract the user info so what is the user info it's the username and password so I don't want to create a tuple I create a two element array so user and then password so these are the two values that I want to insert why do I save this in a array in a two value array this is because I'm telling it that this is the row it will be composed of these two items the user will go under the first column and then the password will go under the second column and then how do I execute this simply I just cursor dot execute and I type my SQL query again this does not have to be SQL this could be literally anything that you like so I will say insert into and then what is my table name login info and then I want to insert into the columns username password now this is good practice even though it's not necessary in this case because we are inserting into all columns what I mean basically is we're not selecting certain columns and inserting into them we're inserting into everything regardless we want to specify the column names and then what do I want to insert I want to insert values so I have the word values right here and then I will simply choose the following so I will say I want a question mark and a question mark and then I will populate this using the user info variable so i'm saying i want to insert into this table the following values user and password once this is done i simply have to commit this change whenever you create changes to your database you must commit them using sqlite so just connection dot commit and then connection dot close since we're obviously done with it so now we run it let's have a final test Let's have someone create a username. So let's say Elon Musk, and he wants to fill in a password. So Q-W-E-R-T-Y, and then the same thing. He presses sign up, all right, and it takes him to the next page. Now, we don't see anything here related to the database. We can go back to the database, refresh it, and we'll see that we have a new user called Elon Musk. So this user was able to interact with our graphical user interface. He was able to create his account by simply filling in his username, writing two passwords and pressing sign up. Once that button was pressed, we were taken to this sign up function right here, where after the correct validations, a connection was created to the database. The user was written to the database and then we have moved on to the next screen. So that's it really for this screen, for this create account screen. The next screen, like I said, we will be talking about it in the next video. We'll be discussing how this entire interface was built, how we have this placeholder image, how we can replace this placeholder image, and then how to use things like the date picker or the combo box, as well as the same old line edits and buttons. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. Please don't forget to leave a like and a comment down below. And please message me if you have any questions. Other than that, that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.